welcome to the tutorial series of the tool DVSum. Let's get a head start. First of all, we're going to see the profile. We can see it on the upper right corner. We go to profile and we can change the language we need. If we uh, English is not our first language, it may be Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, or so on. We have many different. So once you save it, you just save it and you can go back. All right, so first of all, we want to get noticed that we have a green cloud. I'll show you how to get this green, green cloud installed. Maybe we'll have a warning sign that says that we have availability to use the tool, but we're not going to be able to do any changes. And then there's a red cloud that we cannot do. That, that means we cannot do any changes at all. So we're going to go ahead and start with the dashboard. As you can see, we have different dashboards here. We can see the rule count by source, the readiness scores by source, the high priority rules, the term count, the action items that are not finished yet and are past due, and we have a proof dashboard. So we're gonna create one real quick so we can see how it goes. We're gonna click on add widget, and this tool is gonna, and this page is the one that's gonna pop up. So we can see we can have uh, different categories for the rule, for the widgets. This is for the different dashboards we can see. Action items, glossary, job scheduler, data management, catalog fields, catalog tables, and rules. So for a simple purpose of demonstration, we're going to use a rule count. And here we're going to do the title. We can give it a description if we want, or keep it as it is. We're going to select a data source. We're going to select the kind of chart that we want to show. We're going to select the column, which one is important to us. And we can sort it out. So for this thing, we're just going to press save. And you can see we have the dashboard created immediately. This, ha this is how we create dashboards for the ones we need. We can create many different type, kind of dashboards and also share them with our partners. As you can see on the left side, we can go to manage dashboards. And here we can create, we can edit, we can clone and delete. So this is all for the section of dashboards. Let's go quickly to the administration tab. We have four different ones. Let's go to manage users. Once we click Manage Users, we can add how many users can use the tool. We can edit the user, the information, we can manage their access, and we can activate, deactivate, or delete them. Taking account that delete them takes about 40 to, 8 to 72 hours to delete. We can have as many users as we want, 1, 10, 50, or 100,000. It doesn't matter. We don't mind how many users you use. You can also use a manage users by group, for example, sales, finance, products, engineering, data management, and so on for the groups that you require. You can, have, you can see the usage count here. You can also tell them what kind of access you have in the section of manage user access. You can have them access by source, by user, by the public sources, or by public tables. This is the way you want to keep the users in a special way so they don't have information access to the information that you want. Finally, but not least, we have managed sources. Here, as you can see, we don't have any more license to add, but you will be able to add as many as you want. So, for example, we can use this one and we can edit it. It's the same as create. We're just going to use this one. So for example, we have the information here, the source identifier. We can have a source description. If we don't know what data source we're going to use, we're just going to check box. But if we know what kind of data source we're going to use, we can have many of them. And it doesn't matter which kind of data source it is. We can have Oracle, SQL Server, DB2, MySQL, Excel, CSV files, and SAP. Once we choose our data source, we just have to fill in the required information. The IP, the port, the instance name, 
the schema name a user well, we can use for dbsum and the dbsum DB user password. Once we have this information required, we're just going to test connection and it's going to throw a message. Either it's correct or incorrect. After that, we're just going to save and we already have our managed sources requ uh, requested as added. So now, once we do that, we're just going to refresh the catalog and it's going to pop out this checkbox. This means it's OK. So now that we've finished with administration, we're going to go to profile. As we know it, profiling. Profiling basically is the select the SQL server of select all. So we can have the data source and we have all the tables. And as you can see, it says from which source, which table name, the record count, the number of rules created for that one, the readiness score, when was it last read or profiled, and if it was profiled correctly or not, or if it was, has not been profiled. So for the basic of demonstrations, we can see that we can use the run profiler. This is to select all from SQL Server, and we can do it on all the tables. Once we've done this, we're going to go to show details. And as you can see, we have the readiness score, how many columns they have, and when was it last profile. So we can see all the fields. We can see the data quality. The data quality is a rule of data completeness, as we call it, and blank checks. Why? Because we can say if we want to see if the field has blanks or if it, ha it has no fields. Here we can also select the value ranges. For example, in monthly charges, we have a value range that is valid from 15 to 150. That means everything outside this range is wrong. Also, on 10-year months, we say we don't want empty fields. So for example, let's use this rule. Once we run it, we're gonna get this is gonna take about two to ten minutes, depends on how many fields it has to check. And we're gonna see it has exceptions. It has four exceptions out of 7,043. And when it was the last time it was executed. So we want to see what fields are wrong. So let's go ahead and analyze the rule set. This is gonna move us from profile to review. And we can see the rule ID and the description of the rule. So we're gonna, gonna go ahead and click on it. Once it finishes loading, it's going to throw you this screen. It's going to show you the rule number, the description, who's assigned to, the run result, and you can see we have an analysis tab. This is going to show that tenure months was empty, and here's the two fields that are wrong, and monthly charges. Remember, it was from 15 to 150, so these are wrong. So what does DivSum does for us? So now we know this, our fields are wrong. So dbsum helps us that we can cleanse this information or export it to Excel to send it to someone or to, to the data owner to correct this information. So for example, let's take into account that we know what information is OK. So we've got to go ahead and cleanse. And you can see the pen right here. So we just modify it and apply. Either we can use this only for one field or for all the rules. Let's do it for all the rules. As you can see, instantly, both of the empty fields went to five, and we can see the change history, the exceptions, and the remaining exceptions. So we can go ahead and modify it. And as you can see, I just modified one, and it also did the change history. Now, it is right back enabled, because once we do this and we're okay with it, we can save and commit. Once we do that, DBSum is going to talk to the database and it's going to correct these changes directly into the database without going into SQL Server manually and doing it. There's a thing before we do this, there's also a process called a workflow that this means someone's going to have to analyze information, someone's going to have to review the information, and then approve the changes. After that workflow is completed, 
the changes we will take into account. Otherwise, it will send an email saying, hey, you need to, re to review these changes before they go live. Otherwise, this won't happen. So let's go ahead and cancel. All right, as you can see, we move from the tab from profile to review. Let's go quickly back to profiling. Let's go ahead and go ahead and use the, the previous table that we were using. Now we're going to go show details again. And another fun way to see the information or easier way to see information is a data analysis tab. Once the tab loads, you can see it has attributes already or we can use more. It only allows up to four at the same time. So for example, we can see that we have tier A, B, C, and D. We have female and gender and male and gender and senior citizen. So let's say that we want to find out how many users in tier A are female and male. We can see, we can click on it and it says 637 and immediately it does a filter. There are 340 males, females, and 297 males. So which of them are senior citizens? On the male side, we can see 50 are senior citizens and 00 are 247 that are not senior citizens. This way you can view or analyze information in a better and a customized view for you. So let's go ahead and go into the exploration tab. Once we're in the exploration tab, we can search for the data element we want to find. For example, we go ahead and customer. We're going to search for it and we can see here how many times customer has been used. For example, unit count 8869 on one data source. Here we have this one and this one. If this is too hard to read, we can use a table matter over here in this selection box. We can see the source, the table name, and the count. This is an easier way to see the information or the keyword that we're looking for. How many times has it been used? Is it repeated or not? Let's go ahead and go see reference dictionary. For the reference dictionary, we use it on the profile tab on the data analysis tab, we use it to say which ones are valid and which ones are not. Make it as a comparison. So we want to say Australia, Canada, Finland, Norway, Sweden, United Kingdom, and USA are valid. We go into value range, use a reference dictionary, and select this one. And these are the fields that are going to pop, and we can say which ones are valid or not. Then we can create our own personal reference dictionary. We can create it for colors, names, countries, whatever you want. For now, we have finished for, with the profile tab. So let's go into audit and manage rules. Here in this section, you can see all the rules that you have created. And if you require more, you can add simply here in add rule in the business context for unique values, uniqueness, do not use fields, value range, we can check for blanks for or for records. This is a comparison between two tables to see which ones does not have a parent. Process quality, we can validate addresses, count, integrity check, custom query, either SQL or Oracle, it doesn't matter, or a uh, sum of the fields. We have timeliness, runtime cutoff, runtime elapsed, and system integrity, compare count, compare custom query, compare metric, compare table, doc matching and system reconciliation. Here we can see the rule description, the table name, the run status if it were if it works, if it didn't work, if it fails, and if it has exceptions. We can also hear see it in the rule library. In the rule library we can use or see how many of them are associated with application vendors, for example JDA or Oracle, even SAP. We have different for business context, system integrity, process quality, and timeliness. So we have finished with the audit. Let's go with review. Let's go into analyze rules. 
The Analyze Rules tab is similar to the other one, but here we cannot create rules. We can rerun them, we can schedule them, we can export the results, and we can mess up the rules. So for we here we have the rule ID, the rule descriptions, the result, the status, and the run date. Taking into account that sometimes we don't want to use a website and we want to automate things. So for example, let's take into account these three rules. We're going to head on schedule rule. And you can see you can run it at night or whenever you want. But there's also a good thing that if we don't want to use a website, we can generate the script. We can tell it who to tell after it has finished. We can generate the script. And immediately, you can see that we get a curl script. This one, we can use it on the Windows command prompt or Linux, even on an SSIS package. Once this script finishes, it will also send us an email telling us go to the website and review the fails. But in the script, it will also tell us the return code and if it has failed, it has a warnings or if it has passed successfully. I would show you how this works, but I'm not able to run the script as we speak. But I do prompt you to try this out. We're going to go ahead and click OK. And we're going to go to Match and Merge. Here into Match and Merge templates, this is for when we have a lot of persons with the same name and we want to compare the address, last name, and gender, for example. So this way we can say if the last name is exact, we can get a report to say which one is the exact name or if it has fuzzy automatic. This one means that maybe it has the same letters, but it's not the correct spelling. So we might want to differentiate that. For example, we can use this one on the last name or the address line. We can use it on the gender and the US uh, zip code. That way we can know how many people are sharing the zip code or how many people have a similar zip code. We have the file upload tab. This one will let us store Excel files for using into the glossary or into the rule itself. This is, we can say this is a Dropbox inside dbsum. The workflows over here is the one that I was speaking about. We can see we have two workflows that are working right now. It's going to manage workflows. So for example, we can click on it. And we can see the process of a workflow. It will start a simulation. Step one, create a contract and consumer or commercial. If it's yes, it goes to consumer loan execution. If it's a no, execute the commercial loan steps. Take into account this is an example. You can use it for an approval of a ticket, for example, correcting some data. You can create as many workflows as you want and have 10 approvals before it actually goes live. It doesn't matter. So we're going to go ahead and go back and we're going to go into glossary. So what's the glossary for? The glossary is so we can search a term. For example, let's go ahead and with a customer. And we're going to see here the customer ID, the terms. And we can see the basic information and where is it assigned to. You can see it has two different data sources, different tables, but it has the same ID. So we can see this is the way they share the, this field. Here in Lineage, we can see where it actually comes from and how it comes to the end of this customer ID. So it goes from the table customer ID, but from this database, and then it starts from customer ID, but from this data source. We can associate terms if we want or have a data policy on it, and we can assign the role data owner and data steward. You can also import a glossary. For example, if you already have the information on the Excel file, you can just drop it here and immediately the system will read it 
and it will have the terms and the managed categories so you have it immediately on dbsub. This is a tutorial for dbsum tool. I hope you have enjoyed it.